In this video, we're going to have a look at integration using hyperbolic and trig substitutions. So let's start by means of an example. So let's do the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So in this particular one, we can't really do it without substitution. 1 over 1 plus x squared is too difficult to integrate. So if we let u equal, for example, x, then it's not going to make it any easier because you're just going to say 1 over 1 plus u squared. So what we need to do in situations like this when things seemingly won't simplify, where there seems to be no sensible substitution, let's look to the trig functions. So let's write down the trig identities we know. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1. Dividing by cos squared theta, we get tan squared theta plus 1 is identical to sec squared theta. And then dividing the top one by sine squared theta, we get 1 plus cot squared theta is identical to cosec squared theta. And the hyperbolic identity, cosh squared theta minus shine squared theta is identical to 1. So these four identities here are going to help us do the integration. So what we're looking for is to combine these two terms on the bottom to make a single term. So we've got 1 plus a variable squared. So we can see here that 1 plus a variable squared takes two terms into 1. So let's try that. Let's now take this identity here and try and make x equal tan theta. So let x equal tan theta and do an ordinary integration by substitution dx by d theta equals where the differential of tan is sec squared theta and that tells us that dx equals sec squared theta d theta so now we get the integral i equals Okay, so it's the integral over 1 plus, 1 over, 1 plus, not x squared anymore because we've let x equal tan theta, tan squared theta. And we know that dx is sec squared theta, d theta. Equals the integral. We'll notice from our trig identities, 1 plus tan squared theta is sec squared theta. So on the numerator, we get sec squared theta. On the denominator, we get sec squared theta with respect to theta equals the integral of 1 d theta equals theta plus c. So we can see that by combining these two terms on the denominator using a trig substitution, by combining them into 1, we end up with a much easier integral to perform. So we end up with theta plus c. Now going back, x was tan theta. So, since x equals tan theta, this implies that theta is arctan of x. Therefore, the integral i equals arctan of x plus c. So we can see that these two terms here, combining to a single term, actually ended up making the integration a lot easier. But actually, that begs the question, are there any other su suitable substitutions to use as well? Well, this one fits the bill here, because we've got 1 plus a square trig function to make a single term. Or we'll rearrange this hyperbolic function here. We get cos squared theta equals 1 plus shine squared theta. And 1 plus shine squared theta can combine to make a single term cos squared theta. So there's loads of different ways we can do this. Uh, some of them potentially leading us into a dead end. So the best way to decide what the best substitution to use is, is to look at the formula booklet. So we've got that there, snippet from the formula booklet. This is from the OCR formula booklet, but the NXL one is similar. So here we can see if we've got a square number and are subtracting an x squared term and a square root sign, we can see that the answer is arc sine. Therefore, that implies that 
x equals sine theta, or some multiple of sine theta is the best one to use. Here, 1 over a square number plus a square, uh, a square variable gives arc tan. That implies that some multiple of tan theta is the best substitution to use. Here, if we've got a square root of a square number plus a square variable, we get r shine. That implies let x equal shine theta is a good one to use. And likewise here, x squared take away a square number. And then the answer is r cosh x over a. That implies that x equals uh, some multiple of cosh theta would be a good substitution. So let's have a look at an example here. So looking at this example, it says by means of a suitable substitution, show that x squared over the square root of x squared minus 1 can be transformed to cosh squared theta d theta. So this particular one here best matches the situation because we've got a square root at the bottom, x squared minus a number, x squared minus a number. So that's the one that we're going to use. So I can see that the answer is r cosh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal cosh u, say. Well, that means that dx by du equals shine u, which means that in turn dx equals shine u du. Okay, so now let's rewrite the integral out. I get i equals the integral of cosh squared u over the square root of cosh squared u minus 1 times shine u du. And looking at the trig identities, the hyperbolic trig identities, I get cosh squared u minus shine squared u equals 1 which means that cosh squared u minus 1 equals shine squared u. So actually, this denominator here is shine squared u with a square root above it. So it equals cosh squared u, the integral of, over the square root of shine squared u times shine u du. And the square root of shine squared u is just shine u. So you've got shine u on the denominator, shine u on the numerator. Just leaving the integral of cosh squared u du. So that's part one done. So it's in hence show that that's the case there. So part two, hence show that the integral of x squared over root of x squared minus 1 is equal to that there. Well, now we're just left to integrate the integral of cosh squared u du. Well, the way to do that, much very similar to the trig functions. If we look at just the trig, not the hyperbolic trig, but the trig functions, if you're asked to integrate cos squared u, you'd expand cos of 2u and get that it's 2 cos squared u minus 1. Well, we can apply that to cosh. 2u and the rule as was discovered earlier was that it's identical to the trigonometric version is the hyperbolic version except any sine squareds are made negative so here we've got 2 cos squared u uh, cos squared u minus 1 no signs present so 2 cos squared u minus 1 well that means that cosh of 2u plus 1 equals 2 cosh squared u and halving both sides we'll get a half cosh 2u 
plus a half equals cosh squared u. Now integrating that equals the integral of a half cosh 2u plus 1 half du equals 1 quarter shine 2u plus 1 half u plus c equals and this is where we look back up at our initial substitution x was cos u you can see that x equals cos u there so that means that u equals r cos x so a quarter shine of two lots of r cos x plus a half r cos x plus c now this here needs to be simplified we've been given the answer and notice that this is a double angle shine of two lots of that well we know that with double angles that's two shine Our cosh x cosh of our cosh x plus a half our cosh x plus c and looking at this here we'll see that shine squared u is cosh squared u minus one well that means that shine u is the square root of cos squared u minus 1. So that equals a quarter times 2, which is a half. So it equals 1 half. And instead of shine of our cos x, we're going to do square root of cos squared our cos x minus 1 cosh of r cosh of x is just x so times x plus one half r cosh of x plus c and here this says cosh of r cosh of x times cosh of r cosh of x so that's just x times x and this x here we can put at the front so equals one half x square root of x squared minus one plus half r cosh of x plus c. And let's just check that that matches the answer given. So half x root of x squared minus one. Yep. Yeah. Plus half r cosh of x plus c so yes it indeed does match the answer given but I really don't want to leave it there because this is quite a complicated concept I'm going to do one more example so looking at this example it says by means of a suitable substitution find the integral of the square root of 4x squared minus 1 dx well the one here that most closely matches that is this one here because we've got a variable term squared take a number squared under a square root so here we've got a variable squared take away a number squared under a square root and the answer is our cosh so that means we want to use the cosh squared identity so we want this term here 4x squared to equal cosh squared u so that's what we're going to do we're going to let 4x squared equals cos squared u and that means we can use the cos squared u identity which is cos squared u minus shine squared u equals 1 
So that means that cos squared u minus 1 equals shine squared u. So let 4x squared equals cos squared u. That means that x squared must equal a quarter cos squared u. And one thing we can do to achieve that is letting x equals a half cos u. I missed the u over there. I'll just write that in now. So x equals a half cos u. Okay. That means that dx by du equals a half shine u. Which in turn means that dx equals a half shine u du. Therefore, rewriting the integral out, I get i equals the square root, the integral of the square root rather, of 4 lots of a half cos u squared. Take 1 times a half shine u du equals the integral and half cos u all squared equals a quarter cos squared u so that just becomes the square root of cos squared u minus 1 and that's why we use this substitution we want the 4 to cancel so that we could just use the pure trig identity cos squared u minus 1. So here we want all of the 4x squared to equal cos squared u. And we found the x that would make that happen. Okay. Times a half shine u du. And notice using the trig identity, uh, the hyperbolic trig identity, that cos squared u minus 1 is shine squared u so equals the integral of the square root of shine squared u times one half shine u du well that's just equal to shine u times a half shine u so equals the integral of a half shine squared u du so now we're going to use the double angle formula. So pretend this was simply trig rather than hyperbolic trig. To integrate sine squared u, we expand cos of 2u, which gets us 1 minus 2 sine squared u. But we're not talking trig, we're talking hyperbolic trig now. So cos 2u equals 1, and whenever we've got a sine squared u, the hyperbolic counterpart always has the flipped sign. So 1 plus 2 shine squared u. So that means that 2 shine squared u equals cos of 2u minus 1. And we want a half shine squared u. That's what we're trying to integrate. So we'll divide that by 4. We get a half shine squared u equals a quarter cos 2u take a quarter. So that leaves the integral being the integral of a quarter cos 2u take a quarter u plus c. Right, we're almost there. We just need to tidy this up. So we had from our substitution that x was a half cos u, which implies that 2x equals cos u, which implies that u equals r cos of 2x. So summing that in, therefore the answer to the integral i equals an eighth shine.
equals an eighth shine of two lots of our cosh of two X take away a quarter our cosh of two X plus C we've got a double angle here it's shine of two lots of something so equals an eighth times two shine of our cosh 2x cosh of our cosh 2x take away a quarter our cosh 2x plus c this bit's relatively straightforward what to tidy up cosh of our cosh of 2x is just 2x this one's slightly more difficult but we did one like it just before so using the hyperbolic identity cosh squared x minus shine squared x is identical to 1 I get shine squared x equals cosh squared x take 1 so shine x equals the square root of cosh squared x take 1 so an eighth times 2 is a quarter so it equals a quarter and instead of shine we're going to write the square root of cosh squared of our cosh of 2x take 1 times our cosh of 2x uh, cosh of our cosh of 2x is just 2x then take away a quarter our cosh of 2x plus c equals a quarter the square root of and cosh squared of our cosh of 2x is 2x times 2x 4x squared take 1 times 2x take a quarter our cosh of 2x plus c and a quarter times 2x equals a half x square root 4x squared take 1 take away a quarter our cosh of 2x plus c so the key point I was trying to drive home here is to find out the substitution you should look at your formula sheet which tells you the integrals of various different expressions and the answers and that should give you some clue as to what the most efficient substitution is going to be for more videos like this subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses go to alevelmathsrevision.com